Oh, hello, everybody. Um, this is Mr. Kuhn. I want to welcome you to my physical science class. Um, I'm going to try to get you oriented a little bit to how things will look and um, how to access assignments um, before my class this second semester. So we're going to take a little bit uh, of a look at Schoology and how my Schoology is set up. We're also going to look at the course syllabus and just talk about some of the expectations um, during the course of the semester. So if I open up Schoology, and let me go back and start over here. So if I enter um, a class on Schoology, this is what you should be looking at when you get into it. You've got three folders. The first one says third marking period. The second one, the orange folder in the middle there, says third marking period assignments. And the blue folder at the bottom says physical science textbook. OK. Um, the first th folder that I'll have you look at is the one that says third marking period. So this folder is going to be populated as the marking period goes along. Um, the main folders will be listed by weeks. Um, this one says week one. It should say January 13th through 15th. I made a mistake there. I got to go back and correct that. And then in the weeks, you're going to see each, uh, folders uh, for each day of the week. So if you're absent a day or you know you missed an assignment on this day, this is a way that you can go back and find the materials and look at the lesson that you missed that day. Each day that you are in class, you should be looking at the folder for that day. Um, there will usually be assignments as we start the marking period in the hybrid model. There's going to be assignments designated for the at-home students and the in-class students. So you'll see different um, folders in there too. So right now, since we're all virtual, I haven't set the in-class and at-home folders up or differentiated them. Um, I just have them by date. And the, I'm starting to put materials into today's date. Now, this video that I'm making right now eventually will be in there as well. Okay, but you can see that here I have a link for Edpuzzle. We're going to do something with an app called Edpuzzle today. And I also have a PDF file, which is my syllabus for the course that um, I'm going to walk you through here in a minute. So all files and links and materials, instructions for that day are found in these folders. Okay, so each day you come in, that's what's in the third market period. I'll be kind of populating that as we go along. Second folder on here says third marking period assignments. Now this folder is empty as of now because I haven't put any assignments in. But as assignments are given, assignments that go in the grade book, this folder is going to be populated with those assignments listed there. All of the assignments will have attached to them any videos, PDFs, etc., that are necessary to complete the assignment. So this is a good place to go just if you want a list of the assignments for the marking period. Maybe you know if you look at your grades and say, oh, I missed these ones or I still have to get these turned in. This is a good place to go and find the assignments you're missing and then immediately have access to all of the materials and instructions to complete the assignments. Okay, so assignments are listed there. The last folder, the blue folder here, says physical science textbook. And what it is is a PDF copy of a textbook. Okay, we're going to be doing some more work with this tomorrow. So I'm not too worried about it right now. But that PDF is always there on my Schoology page for you. You can download the PDF onto your phone. You can download it onto a laptop. Uh, we are going to download it onto our iPads. And then you have a physical copy of that textbook that's going to be on your hard drive that you can access at any time, even at times maybe when you don't have internet access. Okay, But that is going to remain in Schoology. So if you were to ever lose it or accidentally delete it, or one of your devices crashes and you need to get it on another one, um, there you go. It's, it's there, and it can be downloaded at any time. Okay, so for today, whoops, I'm going to go back in my third marking period folder, and today's date, the 13th. I have a PDF of my syllabus there. 
Okay, and we're going to kind of walk through it. Now, I've already um, put that into Notability. Of course, this is something that you're going to be doing quite often where you're going to be um, taking a PDF and copying it to Notability, working on it in Notability, and then submitting it to me via Schoology. Okay, and this one today, again, is my course syllabus just um, to... If you want to know how to spell my name, which you should, it is K-U-H-N-E, okay? Um, so let's look at the syllabus together. I'm going to start here at the beginning. It says, welcome to physical science. I hope that you're going to have a successful spring semester. It will be an interesting one for sure. In this class, we'll be exploring the physical rules that govern the universe. The course covers both introductory physics and introductory chemistry concepts. And if you don't know what those things are, um, later on in today's lesson, you'll get a little more information about that. It's going to differ a little bit from some of the science classes you took in past years because physical science is more math-based. Um, and you're going to get some formulas and be solving some problems. Um, whereas when you were in sixth grade and you had life science, that's more of a um, concepts and memorization sort of course. And earth science, you don't get into a lot of calculating. I know there's math and there's calculation and all the other branches of science, but I think that this one will be a little more math heavy than what you're used to. Uh, and don't be concerned about that if you don't like math so much. Um, there'll be some other interesting stuff as well. Um, so going on where I left off, um, this is also the year at, that the eighth grade takes the, the state mandated PSSA science test. So you guys, of course, take math and ELA every year in, in PSSA. In eighth grade, you take the science test. You haven't taken a science test since fifth grade. And this year we take the eighth grade science PSSA. And you're actually given questions that pertain to what you learned in sixth grade, your life science year with Mr. Barnes what you learned in seventh grade, your earth science year with Mr. Harold, and then the new information with me. And we'll have to go back and review a little bit for that and get you ready for it. Okay, so uh, again, last year they canceled the state PSSA science exam. At this point, it looks like they are going forward with it. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, things change so fast anymore that you never know, but uh, we'll plan on being ready for that test. Um, speaking of uh, flexibility and change and things, of course, um, with the current situation, in light of the current situation regarding COVID-19, the pandemic, and everything else going on in the world, um, I urge you know students to be as patient and flexible with me as possible. I'm sure things are going to change several times during the course of the semester, and things outlined on this syllabus may need to be modified as we go. So sometimes we got to kind of just play it on the fly in these uncertain times. So... Uh, Please be flexible with that as we go along. We'll try to try to keep things so everybody's on the same page and we're all uh, moving together. All right, so what do we learn about in class this year? Well, once again, as you probably do every year, you're going to get scientific method and measurement. That's a big science PSSA topic. Um, I know probably you've heard and done some of this stuff before, and that's good. So hopefully it'll be a quick review here at the start of the market period. We're going to talk about the definition of matter. Basically, what is stuff made of? What, what is the components of, of things, things that you can touch and feel? Okay, states of matter, solids, liquids, gases, plasmas. We're going to talk about the different states that matter assumes. Um, classification of matter. We're going to talk about things called elements, compounds, mixtures. If you look around you and you see different substances and materials, those substances and materials can be classified into one of these three groups. And we're going to learn about what these things are, you know, the kind of the hierarchy of how matter is built and how we can identify some of these different forms. Okay, and this portion of the um, course here is going to be what... Um, the portion of the curriculum that would come from chemistry. We're going to be looking at chemistry topics, and this is the part here. There actually are a couple more down here. I kind of split some stuff up, but when we get to uh, these are also going to go with the chemistry section, the atom, the periodic table, chemical bonding. We'll also do some stuff in here. So um, 
these topics, motion and force, Newton's laws of motion and forces and fluid, are going to come from a different branch of science, which is called physics. So here with motion and force, um, we're going to be looking at how things move, measuring speed, acceleration, um, how forces cause objects to accelerate and interact. Um, we'll look at friction and some other important things, gravity and important forces like that. Um, Newton's laws of motion. Now, one of the most important scientists in the study of physics is Isaac Newton, who is responsible for a lot of laws and um, information that we're going to look at, right? He was a very influential scientist, and um, his name will be mentioned quite a bit. A lot of this study of, whoops, study of physics can be attributed to Isaac Newton. Sorry about that. Okay, forces and fluids. Okay, we'll look at fluids and how they behave. We're going to talk about atoms. Okay, and um, the atom section, we'll learn about... Uh, There's actually the particles that make up atoms. So within atoms themselves are particles known as subatomic particles, electrons, protons, and neutrons. We'll talk about those. We will talk about how the periodic table gives us information about those atoms. Um, if you look at the periodic table, which I'm sure you guys have seen before, it's going to be up on my wall when you get to class. Um, there's a lot of information on that table, and uh, we'll learn to kind of look at it and understand it in more detail than I bet that you have right now. Talk about chemical bonding, why chemical reactions take place. We'll look at some chemical reactions and uh, talk about that, which is, you know, how matter changes. We're going to talk about energy and energy resources, and if we have time, we'll talk about some electricity. So that's just kind of a preview of some of the topics that we are going to cover. What do I need to bring to class? Well, here's your supplies list, okay? I would like you to bring with you a three-ring binder, okay? The three-ring binder does not have to be fancy at all. I put down a one-and-a-half inch. It doesn't have to be tremendously huge. Um, at the end of each marking period, I'll give you a chance to kind of clean it out so it's not like you're going to have to keep everything in there from now until the end of school in late May or early June, whatever it is. Um, again, one of those white dollar 75, uh, three ring binders that they sell at Walmart is sufficient for the class. I'd like the binder to be for my class only. So you're not trying to put math and, um, science and another class all together in one place where things get mixed and confused. If you can get a binder, please, and dedicate it to my class, um, that's what you should do. Okay, in that binder, you're going to need some tab dividers. We're going to break the binder up into sections. And those tab dividers will be used for that. Um, and again, we'll talk a little bit more about the organization of the binder later. And then you need something to write with, right? Appropriate things to write with are blue or black pens or pencils. Um, please don't use kind of strange colored gel pens and things like that on assignments. Um, usually it's considered professional to use blue or black ink when you are signing documents or working professionally. And uh, of course, a pencil is, is also fine. Okay, binder needs to come to class each day. Okay, that's one of the keys to staying organized in class is you go to your locker in the morning, you get out your science binder, you bring your science binder to class. When you're in science class, all your papers and stuff go in that binder. And then the next day when you come to class, everything's there and you are prepared and ready to go. Okay, so all papers are going to be kept in those binders. They're going to be organized chronologically, which means, you know, by time in the order in which um, papers were given to you in, order, in the order of which we did them. And I'm going to check you on this binder by giving you a notebook test. Okay, so the binder is part of your grade. At the end of each marking period, you're going to get a notebook test. During that notebook test, there will be questions asked. 
really that don't take any brain power. Um, they're easy tests and people who are organized for class and maintain a good notebook will get easy hundreds on this test. But it is pretty much just given to check that you have stayed organized and made the effort to keep everything together. Okay, and uh, it'll be questions and things that make you go back into the notebook and find materials that you should have. And then again, you'll just answer an easy question about those materials. Okay, but there will be some um, accountability for the maintenance of your notebook. All right, we're going to be using several texts and apps in this class. I'll go through them quick here, and then as we kind of get going with class, um, we'll need to maybe get you to sign in and log in and join a class with some of these things. Textbook I talked about, right? The electronic copy of the whole uh, Reinhardt and Winston physical science textbook is on your iPad in my Schoology at all times. It's a downloadable PDF, and you can you can find it there. Of course, we're going to use Notability. I'm sure that you guys are well familiar with that because I think most of the teachers are using that for completing assignments. You may have seen this app on your um, iPad. It's called FET. Um, FET is a um, an app produced by the University of Colorado um, that has a bunch of simulators that you can manipulate that pertain to the different concepts that we teach in class. So again, you probably saw this on your home screen because I believe it is on all the eighth grade iPads. And uh, you might have looked around at some of them and, and things like that. They look an awful lot like games and stuff when you look at them, but um, they are pretty good simulations of things, some of the things. And they allow you to manipulate um, the variables that are involved in different things and um, explore. So for some of our virtual labs, now with COVID going on, it's a challenge to do physical labs because we can't work in groups where we're close together. Um, we have to be careful about touching the same objects and things. So um, as far as that concerned, some of our labs, and maybe more of them this year, will be done virtually using this FET app, which is really the best we can do in the situation that we currently live in to be able to do labs. Um, Edpuzzle is the next one. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. Maybe you used it in other classes, perhaps, but we're going to use it some in my class. Matter of fact, uh, there is going to be an assignment um, today on Edpuzzle, so we'll look at that here later. Okay, you're going to do Kahoot, right? Each chapter, I usually have a Kahoot, and we'll play review games in class sometimes, and also they can be accessed at home. A lot of times, they're good reviews for the vocabulary and material that's in the chapter. We're going to use IXL, okay? So there's a science IXL as well as math that I will be directing you to to complete assignments as the marking period goes along as well. So I think you guys are familiar with that app also. Grading. So students going to receive grades. You will have homework and classwork, labs and projects, tests and quizzes. Basically, the grades are calculated. It's a point system, right? So every time you get an assignment based on the number of questions or how much work the assignment takes, I will, you know, give the assignment a certain number of points. And then your performance on that assignment is going to determine how many points you get. So maybe if it's a 10-point assignment, you do an excellent job, you get all 10 points. At the end of the marking period, the ratio of earned to total points assigned is going to be your grade. So basically, it's just a straight point system. Extra credit. Generally, every marking period, I give one extra credit assignment. I want to talk about this now because... Uh, what this means is, yes, there is some extra credit. So students who are willing to do a little bit of extra work are able to improve their grade in class. Um, however, that's the only extra credit that's given. So if you are looking for extra credit, this assignment needs to be taken advantage of. Because if you come to me with two weeks left before the end of the marking period and say, I need to raise my grade, can I have some extra credit? My answer is going to be no. Um, the extra credit assignment was made available to you, and that is when the extra credit, if you want it, should be taken advantage of. So, um, make up work. So, when you're absent, nowadays, when even when I'm absent from school as a teacher, it seems like I still have to 
you know, post lessons and answer questions from students and things like that. So our, you know, ability to kind of work um, virtually or at distance learning at this point makes it a lot easier for you to go in and figure out what you missed. Sometimes it's impossible to do. Sometimes the activity that you were out of school for, it's difficult to do it out of school because it requires being in, in person. But anyhow, make the effort, if you are absent, to go in and look in the folder on Schoology for the date you missed and see what you missed and be responsible for that, okay? Being absent unless you are seriously ill um, and if you're still capable of doing some work, then uh, it's your responsibility to get those things done. If you don't understand or you had a problem, make sure you seek help from me when you return. Be proactive in making assignments up. Okay, so in school versus home. As you're aware, as of now, students will be alternating between in school and at home instruction. Students who are at home should check school on a daily basis and complete the posted assignments for each day. I will post daily updates on Schoology, giving instructions for that day's assignment. Okay, feel free to contact me if you or your child has any questions. My phone number at school is listed, and my email, of course, at school is also there. Okay, and you can sign here, and this is a place for a parent signature. If there are any questions on this, um, you know, please feel free to send them to me and I'll do my best to try to answer them. Um, this assignment here, just the syllabus, will be uploaded to Schoology. So I'm going to make just an easy assignment today and put it in. And when you get signatures on your syllabus, please send those in. And um, that will be your first assignment for the marking period. Okay, I just wanted to show you this before we wrap up here for today. Um, I'm going to have you do an Ed Puzzle assignment today. Okay, so there are instructions in Schoology in the folder that I want you to go. Each class, each period has a different class code that needs to be entered. But I do want to show you this. When you try to log in, where it says you want to do log in with Google, um, the... Um, when you go in through the app, it'll give you the opportunity to enter your email manually and enter your password. You don't want to do that. You want to choose this login with Google right here, and then you're going to use your school Google account to um, get into Edpuzzle. Again, once you get into Edpuzzle, there is going to be a class code that you need to enter to get into the proper class. Um, Again, I'm not going to go through the whole thing here because it'll probably show my teacher view. But those class codes are in the Schoology folder for today. Um, you'll see a link there to the Edpuzzle. And I listed those class codes, so those will be available to you. When you get in there today, there's an assignment, which is called What is Physical Science, which is like a five-minute video. And then there are some questions to answer. Okay, so you can go ahead and do that. So... I hope that makes sense, um, kind of a lot to go through, and uh, we'll um, get things straightened down as we go along. I'm looking forward to meeting all you guys here starting next week. Um, again, welcome to class, and I hope we have a uh, good spring together. I'm looking forward to it. So we'll see you soon. Have a great day.